There had been some attempts to do gene therapy, somatic gene therapy, early in the 1990s. Uh, but the death of a participant, Jesse Gelsinger, during a somatic therapy um, gene uh, trial in 1999 led to a halt on these trials. When, when you have those, those situations, those singular situations, but that um, wake up uh, the, the media and public policymakers, they start putting data and stuff back behind bars and stopping somatic uh, gene therapies as well. It was in, and don't forget, CRISPR runs through everything, huh? all, the, all the genes. It was in 2015 that CRISPR really became uh, uh, known to most um, individuals. And scientists at that time were creating a gene drive, a gene drive that could eliminate pests or make mosquitoes that wouldn't be able to transport, let's say, the Zika virus and so on. And they started also playing uh, the modifying or uh, 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 editing non-viable non human embryos. And hence, this was thought to be fantastic. Um, it was accessible. It was uh, affordable. could be universally available in any country. It could used, be used to create tissue-based treatments for cancer repair conditions and one day perhaps alter the human Germline. Well, uh, this, this um, uh, technique, however, did attract incredible uh, attention, especially um, there should be a law against it reflex uh, when uh, a Chinese scientist uh, announced that he had uh, uh, the two babies who had been born, whose embryos had been altered so as to induce HIV resistance. And it's been an incredible journey um, ever since because it wasn't as though there wasn't a law against it. If you look at this map, again a map from our Center of Genomics and Policy, you will see that um, we looked at prenatal, pre-implantation, uh, embryo research, and so on, and research cloning, but the one on germline, the reds everywhere mean restrictive. And permissive did not mean green light, it meant that there was an agency or some sort of controls, but um, there was research going on on embryos up to the age of 14 days, and those embryos were never implanted. Since 2015, since that announcement, 61 ethics reports and statements from more than 50 countries have pronounced on germline modification. And only 11% of them are open to the possibility of allowing uh, clinical uh, applications. Here in Canada, the Assisted Human Reproduction Act of 2004, the one I talked about 20 minutes ago, actually does not allow uh, uh, the creation of embryos for research or to quote um, any uh, altering, knowingly altering the genome of a cell of a human being or in vitro such that the alteration is capable of being transmitted to descendants. So what was missing then aren't laws or guidance. What's missing was enforcement. And that uh, uh, applied to China as well, who immediately started putting in enforcement mechanisms. Now, the WHO has created an expert advisory committee on ethics and governance due to report next year, and the academies have um, created an international commission to look at what would be the conditions for germline editing if one day the clinical applications were safe and effective. Mm -hmm.